Hi, and welcome to this video for industrial design RMIT footwear students. Um, welcome to anyone else who is um, interested in this video. And what we're going to be doing today is we're going to look at how to add a bend mesh and how to modify the shoe so that it looks like it's uh, you know running. It's got a dynamic uh, flow to its surface. So let's get going. All right, so what we need to do is we need to take all of our meshes and we need to combine them. So I'm just gonna select my shoe and I'm going to use uh, Control J and I'm gonna join all of my meshes into one, um, one mesh grouping. So here I'm just gonna rename this shoe like that. And we've got that um, in one file. So we're selecting all the meshes and I have um, applied all of my modifiers um, prior to doing that um, so that it's very easy to edit this design. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to um, create a cage around this shoe. So the easiest way to do that is Shift A, add a mesh, and a cube, then scale the cube down. So just come out here like this. Go S, scale it down. Now we want to be able to see through the cube. And what we can do is come to the object properties, viewport display, and the display as, make it wire. And now we can see the wire by, uh, box for that. Let's just move it so that it's roughly in the center. Let's scale the Z down. And then let's look into the Y and let's scale the X and move that so that it's in the center. All right, so now that we've done that, what we're going to do is edit the cube. And we are going to add in um, some subdivisions. So let's add in a few more. Whoops, press escape to put it back into the center. And then let's add some down the center here, like that. All right, so now that we've got this uh, cage around our box, and we're coming to the X, we basically we need to get this to approximate around our shoe. So the quickest and the easiest way to do this is that on our cube, Let's make a new collection and let's move the cube into that other collection so that it's not with the shoe. The shoe's in its own collection. Let's get out of the object mode, select that, add a modifier, a shrink wrap modifier, and we're going to shrink wrap it to the shoe. And then we're going to have a, we're going to say outside surface and offset say of 20 millimeters should work fairly well all around the object so there we can quickly uh, put our cage on and it looks pretty good so far so we might choose to uh, we actually need to apply this shrink wrap modifier later on it won't work if you have a modifier on when we put the armature in so let's just whoops control z let's uh, apply that and then also what we can do with some of these is we can edit this. We can go into point mode. We can select the points. And we can scale in the Y and we can scale them down towards the zero. We can go over and we could just press zero and it would scale them all straight and press enter. So we can come in here and we can select these 
make sure that we've only got the ones that we want selected. S, Y, and then scale it down towards that. And we're just going to fix up some of the S, Y, scale it down. Do the same here. S, Y, scale it down. And S, Y, scale it down. Okay, so that's looking better. Nice and straight. These ones obviously curved. These ones obviously curved. It looks like there's enough spacing all the way, all the way around our mesh, even here on these little door tab pulls that are on the model. So I'm pretty confident that that will work now. All right, so what we're going to do is we need to put an armature in here, the bones that will move the shoe. So we'll just come into our X view, and what we're going to do is Shift A and add an armature, and scale down the armature. And you'll note that the armature is hidden in behind. So when we come to Object Viewport, we can say In Front. Okay, now we can move this bone, scale it down more, rotate it around the X, like that, and we can fit our toe into our shoe, our X. Perfect. Now let's go into edit mode, grab the end here, and go E for extrude, and extrude another bone out. E, extrude, E, extrude, put a few bones in, let's put a bone in the back like this, and then from the front here, let's go um, duplicate, shift D and duplicate the bone up to here, and then let's grab this end and pull it up to the front of the shoe like that. Actually, let's make it smaller. Let's let's put a couple of. Let's just move that down. R X. Come to the end. E. Extrude another bone out like that. Perfect. All right. So now what we've we need to do is we need to join our mesh and our armature together. So we go out of edit mode, select the mesh, shift, select the bone and we'll parent. So control P will parent the um, mesh to the armature, armature deform, automatic with weights. And now if we move this bone, go R, X, I move it, the whole thing is moving with it. What have I done wrong? Uh, put the armature in with that collection there, so make sure that the armature is in the right collection. Let's go into pose mode, that's what I didn't do. Pose mode, control tab, grab that bone, and now go R, X, and now our mesh bends. Okay. I'm thinking that I might need a few more subdivisions here. So what I need to do is effectively delink my um, mesh and my armature from each other. So if I go out of pose mode, just select the mesh, right click, parent, clear parent. It should be Alt P, but I think it's my screen recording software that's getting in the way there. So now that that's unparented, I can go tab, and I can go Control R and I can add in some more edge loops in here. Grab that one. S, X, 0, Y. No, it's Y. S, Y, 0. Perfect. Let's just make sure that, that worked out right. Yep. Great. And I might put another one in here. Okay, so the parent goes back up. Parent, automatic weights. 
Okay, so now that we've got that, what we want to do is we want to, with our mesh, add a modifier, and we want to add a deform, mesh deform. And in here, the object that we want to select is the cube, this cube that we made. And then we want to bind the mesh to the cube. So if, when we press bind, it'll bind all of the meshes in our shoe to that cube mesh. Now it's done and we can see we can unbind it. If we make any uh, changes to this um, cube, we need to unbind and then rebind the mesh every time. Now that we've got that, if we click on the armature and we go control tab, control tab and click on this bone, and we rotate it around the X, we should get our shoe rotating. But we notice we've got a couple of issues there. Some of the bones aren't rotating with it. So maybe I've um, joined that bone onto the wrong spot. Let's get that one. Let's go R. Let's rotate that around the X. We might need to rotate our bones individually. So maybe it's not better off doing a shift D and join and um, making a duplicate. Maybe I do need to just pull it out of one of the bones um, and have it connected. So let's have a look at that. Let's go um, control Z, control Z. Okay. Let's take our armature, get out of pose mode. Let's completely delete it. Let's go delete. Okay. Let's come back into the X, Shift A, Armature, S for Scale, Scale it right down. Um, let's go into the Properties and say in front. Let's go S, Scale it down, R, X, rotate it around, move it into here, S, Okay, so let's make a bone, let's go here, let's go um, E, and let's uh, edit mode, select that, let's go E, extrude a bone up, like that, let's grab this one, let's go E, and extrude a bone out that way, and E, extrude a bone out that way, and E, extrude a bone up that way. Okay, so now let's get out of edit mode. Let's parent the cage to the bone. Control P, automatic weights. Okay, now let's have a look. If we grab this bone, oh, these bones probably, I should have maybe put that bone up there out of that one. Um, I wonder if we can go to pose mode, control tab. I wonder if we can select two bones and go R, X. Yeah, look at that. We can move two bones together and we can rotate our shoe up. Okay, so now we've rotated our shoe and we've bent the front of the runner. So we can pull out another window. We can set up our camera view that we might want. I'll come to Easy cam, add a camera, go to camera view, come in here, grab the camera, I've got it on uh, global, let's put it on local, pull that camera back, move the camera around, we could say, um, R, X, and rotate it around a bit, pull it up, position the camera how you want it, and we can also add in, oh, we've got a focus empty here, let's find the focus empty, there it is, and we can position our focus empty on our shoe, and we can go in here, Go to easy cam, 
depth of field. You can see the depth of field's gone out. Uh, focus object is that empty. Focus empty. And we've got it on f2.8. So now we could um, render out our view. I don't think we've got any lights in here at the moment. No. So, ah, and we need to turn our cube off in both rendering and the viewport mode. So we don't have any lighting. So we've got object, world, just zoom out, get rid of this. I don't need it. Shift A, add a texture, add an environment texture, plug the vector into the vector and the color into the surface open and then go and find where you have your, um, your HDR I and add your HDR I and now it's lighting the environment so we can rotate the light around our scene and we can see that it's lighting our shoe we can rotate that around and then we can render out our view that's getting too big but here it comes rendering out our view of our shoe i need to adjust i've got rendering on 200 percent i only want it on 100 percent and there we have our image denoised with the glowing on it uh, and if i move this around there's our rendering there of the shoe Uh, what's important also to note is that in my um, render settings in film I have transparent turned on if I didn't have transparent turned on I'd get the background of my HDRI so here we can see in uh, wrapping up that I have uh, added a plane uh, put a curve bevel on it and I brought in a standard image um, of running track and then position my shoe and set up the camera so that I can render out my preview and here we'll see that cycles render coming out with our depth of field on the track and we can soften down a few things later on in Photoshop.